Hey guys, welcome to episode number 26 of Tales from a Retro Gamer. Today I'm going to talk a little bit briefly just about, uh, I hit the 1,000 subscriber mark. I'm super excited about that. I'm pretty new at this, so I'm really excited about the fast growth. Thank you so much guys for liking, thank you for subscribing, thank you for watching the episodes, I really appreciate it. A lot of you have had some really nice things to say, you seem to really be enjoying the channel, and thanks for the shares and all that stuff, really appreciate it. Thank you to my son Ryan, who records and edits the videos, really appreciate it. Thank you to Pledger Design and Sean Tiedemann, uh, the director of um, King of Arcades did some just beautiful channel art for, for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate it. So the question today is, why YouTube? Why am I doing YouTube? Okay, first of all, I really like to talk about video games. And not everybody always wants to hear about that, just you know, in my normal day-to-day -day life. So it's great to have this outlet <clears throat> to talk about retro games, gaming of the past, some modern stuff too. So this is a great place to do that. Now, I've been accused of not smiling much. You know, I, th I tend to have the resting bitch face or whatever you say, but I do love doing this regardless of what my face says. Anyway, it's a blast. I love talking about video games, and this is a creative outlet for me, another creative outlet. I've been writing about video games and things like that for a very long time, pop culture, and I like art. This is just another creative, out creative outlet for me, and it's a, it's a whole lot of fun. And I've been wanting to do, I, I had been wanting to do uh, YouTube for a very long time, but I just, you know, up until about four years ago, I really didn't know what to do with it. Now, so around this time, I met a guy named Curtis Newton. He's a friend of a friend, a really cool guy, big guy, just a guy that loved to laugh, really loved life, just has a really outgoing personality, big gamer. And he um, just, you know, real passionate about gaming, really loud. Everybody that knew Curtis uh, knows he's very loud. Friend of the family, the whole nine yards. So I met him about four years ago at the Kimball Art Museum. So we were, my wife and I were there just to, you know, check out the exhibits and everything. And he was there with his girlfriend, Tammy, who we were good friends with and still are. And they were just looking around and, you know, and say, hey, Tammy, what's going on? And I met Curtis. And Curtis, uh, I was like, you know, Curtis must be at least kind of cool because he's here at the museum, seemed like a really nice guy. And we sort of got to talking over the next few months, and I realized that this guy's a hardcore gamer. Now, he was, uh, you know, really into the modern guy. I keep saying was because he did pass away, and I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. Um, so Curtis and I hit it off really well because we're both big, big time gamers. He likes the retro stuff, but he was, a, you know, more into modern games. As a matter of fact, he was the host of HoldSquare.com, which was just this global web website that brought gamers from around the world together, you know, online and in person. So not only would they, you know, play the PlayStation 4 online together, they would meet in the Dallas-Fort Worth area as well to have, you know, parties and get-togethers and stuff, meetups, gaming together. But anyway, so Curtis brought all these people, all these PlayStation 4 owners together in this awesome forum. And we got to talk in, and you know, I'd been wanting to do uh, more with YouTube, and he had been wanting to do some with YouTube. So we talked uh, a little bit about, you know, getting a channel together, and so or getting a, you know, starting a podcast or doing something like that. So we we threw some ideas around, and we thought we would have the Hold Square Video Game Podcast, where we would talk about current events, we would maybe do a few reviews, talk about retro gaming, modern stuff, whatever. He would talk, you know, keep everybody up to date on everything coming out new, and I would sort of add a retro slant to that, you know, some of my background. And so we started this podcast, uh, this YouTube podcast, video podcast, and we did this for, you know, a few episodes, and we were just kind of starting to get the hang of it, and our good friend Jordan was there with us. And it was a lot of fun. We kind of had some back and forth. We would rag each other a little bit. Maybe some of you guys have seen these episodes. I've got a couple of them on my channel. And so it went on for a few weeks, and Curtis had big plans. He was going to add post-production, gameplay footage, uh, you know, some get some green screen going, you know, get some graphics and all that kind of stuff. But just as we started going and kind of getting in the hang of things and getting our groove going, Curtis started feeling bad. So he would miss an episode here and there, you know, say, hey, let's do it next. We were going to try to go for a weekly thing, and he would miss here and there. And he would complain of headaches and maybe some nausea and maybe a migraine here and there. And that was a little concerning, but I didn't think a whole lot of it, of it. You know, I thought maybe he's just getting tired of the podcast and 
you know, people get sick here and there, whatever. And so Curtis and I, we really became good friends during this process. We would go to video game conventions. We would go to comic book conventions. We went to the National Video Game Museum in Frisco, Texas, which is just about 45 minutes from, from where I live. But what really made this, what, what I really, when I really discovered that Curtis, this was serious, that, you know, Curtis wasn't just, you know, getting tired of doing YouTube or just kind of flaking out on me. What, 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 what happened was we went to a Star Trek convention in Dallas and we were really enjoying it, really having a good time. Well, in the afternoon, Curtis started complaining of a headache, started not feeling good. And I was like, okay, all right. Um, and so he, William Shatner was just getting ready to come on, you know, the big keynote speaker, Captain Kirk. He's just getting ready to, you know, do his big presentation, his big keynote speech or whatever, Q&A, and Curtis leaves. Now, I knew, now Curtis was a massive Star Wars fan, first and foremost, but he also loved Star Trek a lot. And so, for William Shatner to come out and for Curtis to leave, I knew it was serious. And then, you know, not too long after that, he hit his head at work and that sort of exacerbated things. And sadly, um... On January 26, 2017, Curtis did pass away. Now, we didn't find out to the following day, January 27th, 2017, my wife and I were headed to Frisco, where the video museum is. Um, we were headed to Frisco to Nerdvana. Now, that's a video game themed restaurant that's owned by uh, Randy Pitchford's wife. Now, Randy Pitchford is the owner of Gearbox Software uh, located in Frisco, and they were having a big media event at Nerd Nerdvana. Now, I was really excited about this. My wife was excited. They have really delicious food. And uh, Penn from Penn and Teller, you know, Penn Gillette, he was going to be there. Randy was going to be there. And it was just going to be this really fun, big media event with drinks and food and all that stuff. I always love these press junkets. They're a ton of fun and you get treated great and everything. We were on the way there, you know, just having a great time. Well, 10 minutes before we got there, we got that phone call that. Everybody gets at some point in their life, but that you never want to get. Tammy called and said that Curtis had died. And we were just absolutely in shock. We knew he had been sick and, you know, this and that. But the thought of him dying, he was only 43 years old, just completely shocked us. We just, this just completely, even though he had been sick, it completely, uh, it, it hit us just out of the, it just seemed like out of the blue. And so we were in a little bit of shock. What do we do? We were just 10 minutes away from the restaurant. Do we turn around and go home and just sit and stare at the wall? Do we go cry somewhere? Do we just continue what, what we're going to do? And we thought, Curtis would be really mad if we just canceled this whole night and went home and whatever. Curtis would want us to do this. And we were just sort of in a state of shock. We really didn't want to go home. That sounded depressing. So we went on to Nirvana, made the best of it, you know, did the schmoozing, handed out you know, my business cards, talked to other members of the press. Met Pendulette, he was great. Randy was there, Randy Pitchford with Gearbox, he was great. So we just, we did what we could. I was in such a state of shock that I texted my kids that Curtis had died. And, you know, that's, that wasn't cool because, you know, but when someone dies, if anybody's, you know, you're in a little bit of shock. So if somebody ever acts, you know, if you know somebody that dies or you know somebody that knows somebody that dies, whatever, if there's a death in your circle, and someone acts kind of weird about it, give them, cut them some slack because they might be in a state of shock, which I was. And so anyway, so we made the best of it that night. And so, you know, a few days later, there was Curtis's funeral and Curtis would have loved it because they did, we did a big, uh, so as the, you know, casket was being carried, they did the big uh, lightsaber salute. You know, everybody was holding their lightsabers up, you know, in a, in a procession as his casket was carried through. He would have gotten a kick out of that. Just a major, major Star Wars fan. Big fan of Metallica. Big fan of the Dallas Cowboys. Loved life. Really great guy. And obviously, the worst thing about him dying was just, you know, leaving his friends behind. Uh, he had a lot of friends. Everybody missed him so much. Personally, just a slight thing, you know, to me, obviously, you know, in the grand scheme of things, no big deal. But I was really disappointed. I no longer had my podcasting partner because he was a great uh, front man for this. I was just the sidekick, and that was the position I was comfortable being in because he was you know, the host of the show, and he did such a great job. But uh, that just left me sort of, okay, what do I do? You know, Obviously, our family's sad about Curtis, but you know, life goes on. Life is for the living and all that stuff. And I had to figure out, what am I going to do with YouTube now? 
Well, I was angry for a couple of years and didn't really want to do anything with it. I barely even wanted to watch videos on YouTube because it just reminded me of Curtis. And so I was just sort of bitter. I didn't go through the you know stages that you're supposed to go through uh, when you're grieving or whatever. I just pretty much stayed angry. And so I just, you know, after a time though, I got to thinking about it. Okay, what am I gonna do? And there was one particular person, a Facebook friend of mine, I was sort of talking to them about this, maybe whining a little about Curtis dying and you know, I don't and YouTube and everything. And he goes, So become a YouTuber. And I'm like, and that that kind of sort of was a kick in the pants, and so I that started thinking about that. Okay, I'll do that. So what is different about me? How can I separate myself from other YouTubers? What can I do that's unique? What's different? I don't want to just be another uh, reviewer. I mean, I've, I've reviewed video games forever, but you know, I don't know that I want to be a video reviewer. There's so many of those. I didn't want to just you know, sort of make snarky comments about games. What can I do? So I thought, what separates me? Well, I'm probably a little older than most gaming YouTubers. Um, I'm, you know, uh, I'm 52 now, and I've been there, you know, almost from the beginning. Started gaming in '75, got a ColecoVision for Christmas in '82, and on and on and on. Been there a long time. I have stories to tell, so that's what I've been doing. And I really appreciate you guys watching these episodes. I'm super excited to get to uh, number a thousand. I think Curtis would appreciate what I'm doing, and I want to dedicate this episode to him. And um, I just. I'm just really flattered and just really honored that you guys are watching the show and I'm really excited to get to a thousand, but this is only the beginning. Obviously I have friends with, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers. One friend of mine, Paul, the eight bit guy just hit a million. That's phenomenal. So we're just getting started here, but, but I'm super excited and super encouraged about a thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I'm super excited about a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. Now next week, like I told you guys, as soon as I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to tell this awful, awful story that happened to me. This gaming related story while I lost thousands and thousands of dollars. I was embarrassed. It's something I don't like to talk about or even think about because it showed my ignorance on a particular field of gaming and it cost me a lot of money. Um, anyway, that's going to be next week. I'm kind of looking forward to the episode just to get it off my chest, but I hope you guys will tune in. Thank you so much for liking this video. Thank you for, thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And we will see you guys next week. Peace out.